الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين به ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق أجمعين سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب رب العالمين سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم اجمعنا بهم واجعلنا معهم في عليين من غير سابقة عذاب ولا حساب آمين يا رب العالمين Dear brothers and sisters قال الله عز وجل في القرآن أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا قوا أنفسكم وأهليكم نارا وقودها الناس والحجارة عليها ملائكة غلاظ شداد لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون صدق الله العظيم The title of the khutbah today is Your Real Investment The word investment became so familiar to everyone even for the young ones. I get approached by my own kids, by children in the community, I want to do an investment. Why? Because we live in a world that believes in the currency, in cash. And everything they look after is about materialistic life. And they think, the whole world, taqriban, thinks that happiness come with investment that brings profit in terms of money is money an evil thing of course not at all there is so many ayat that talks about money money is not evil if you bring it from halal source and you spend it in a halal way 
and you give the zakah and the charity that you're supposed to, do, to give in the way of Allah Azza wa Jal. This money is a tool. It doesn't bring happiness, but it is a tool. If it is utilized in the right way, it brings you happiness. But is it the real investment? Is money a real investment? Today we're talking about a better investment than just buying shares or investing your money with banks or whatsoever. Because that money will work for you, your money in you know, investment, your material, will work with, with, for you when you're alive. It will work for you when you are in good health. But what about after this life? It will work for you only if you spend it in, in, in a halal way, in a charity. But what is the real investment that I want to talk about today? It is what this ayah was talking about. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O those who have, who are mu'mins, who are people of faith, Allah is addressing you. Qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Prevent yourself, protect yourself and your family from the hellfire. وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةِ The hellfire that is so huge, so different than any imagination we have, it's not just a fire. It is a fire that, the fuel of that fire is rock, rocks and human beings. May Allah protect us from that hellfire. Amen. So Allah is telling you, your job in this life, according to this ayah, is to invest in your life by protecting yourself and your family from this hellfire. Not only protecting yourself from poverty, from sickness, life insurance, uh, health insurance, the, uh, car insurance, house insurance, the real insurance, the real investment is that you keep yourself and your family away from the hellfire by following the orders of Allah and His Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If I ask all of you, why you, we, we migrated to Canada? And if you're not uh, 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 the immigrant, your dad, you ask your dad. If you're a young fellow, there, we all have one answer. For our families and children. We all have the same answer. I've been here around 15 years, and I'm sadly telling you honestly that, yes, we say we are here for our families and for our children, but the fruit of our actions are working against our plan. The, uh, the reality, day to day, the, the stories, the horrible stories that we, we see every day, every single day, every single hour, a lot of family, may Allah forbid that we are a part of them, are losing their children, are losing their families. Divorces are increasing in, insanely in a way that I can't understand what's going on with these families. I received a call the other, the other day from a, a, a sister who told me exactly these words. We just arrived six days ago, and that's in the first week of Ramadan. And we, we have been married for almost 25 years, and I have three or four children, I forgot. The youngest is around 20 plus, and she's asking my advice. Is it better to go to court for divorce or to come to masjid for divorce? I said, what? You've been in Canada five days and you're already thinking of divorce? What's going on? I mean, and the story goes on and all this. Subhanallah. Yeah. And then I, when I pressured her, she said, because I was told that here they support the divorcee lady and they gave her a house and they gave her salary. Is that true, Sheikh? I said, Wallahi, I don't, I don't know. I don't know and I don't care. And, I, and, and if, you, if you're doing this to get a house and get a, a salary, you're doing a big time haram. So every single day. So we came for our families and a lot of us are losing our families. 
and losing our children. And some, and, 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 and many people think, no, we are doing fine. You go and check that fine. You see that fine is almost daily fight inside the house between husband and wife. Almost daily. And anger and pressure and depression. Second, the children are in another different world than the father and mother. On a diff they live on a different planet. The mother is hijabi, the daughter is not. The father is praying in the masjid. His kids hardly know the masjid. The father and mother knows how to speak, just an example, Arabic, because they came from an Arabic country. The kids, zero in Arabic. What's going on? I mean, is that the success story that we came here to tell? Is this the legacy we want to keep behind? Is this the investment that we want to meet Allah with? Are we actually protecting ourselves and our kids and our family from the hellfire where the fuel of that hellfire is rockets, uh, rocks, uh, stones, and human beings? Or are we actually, may Allah forbid, preparing our kids for, to be part of that billah, fuel of fire? We need, to, we need to take the chance of this Ramadan and evaluate ourselves and be honest with your own self. Sit down and check what fruits, what, if I may say, product I have at home from my sweat, time, age, migration. Is this what I wanted from the beginning? And a lot of people will say, what can I do? This is this was what this what happened. Subhanallah, as if you have no uh, fault in it. Of course, the responsibility 100% is on our shoulder. Now, the responsibility is not related directly to the result. It is related directly to the actions. To your, did you do what you should do? If you did, and the results weren't that where, where you want, that's okay. Allah will not. Uh, hold you accountable for the end result that you might even not see or know. But Allah will hold you accountable and hold me accountable for our actions and our niyyah and our day-to-day -day struggle towards keeping our family away from the hellfire. And we all know that in the West we are close to the hellfire. In terms of what? In terms of the challenges, the desires, the evil uh, pressure, the dunya, too much dunya around us, too much things that t pulls us away from akhirah, too much excitement, too much of everything. When was the last time we sat with our children and family and did this evaluation? I ask a lot of brothers and sisters, do you, do you read Quran with your family? He said, not really, sometimes. This is the basics, brothers. Wallahi, this is the basics. If back home, we are busy, but at least there is a support of the school, the, the grandfather, the grandmother, the aunt, the uncle, the community kind of support, although it's not that much anymore in many of our communities where we came from. But at least here, the responsibility is doubled and tripled and it's, 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 it's uh, uh, limitless. If you, if you are here for your children, be truthful to yourself and check your milestone. Where did I go with my children? If your child named Muhammad and he wants to be called Mo or Mike, that's a problem. If your child named Khalid and he wants to be called Cal, you are partially responsible because he's not proud of his name. If, your, if, if, if he's Saaduddin or Saeed and he wants to be called Sam, we see this. We see this day in, day out. And from our close community and from parents who to pray in our masjid. What's the solution? The solution is in the ayah which we, we just read. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. How can we protect ourselves and our children from the hellfire? 
Now we are in Ramadan. A while ago, mashallah, Sheikh Amjad have elaborated around four points that do not leave Ramadan without making sure you insert a habit in your family and the children, a habit of worship, a habit of faith, that we read Quran together, we pray jama'ah sometimes together, we bring our, our children to the masjid and tell them this is where we, the community, becomes stronger. We teach them how to donate, we give them money and donate and tell them to pray. We make dua together. together. How many of us sit uh, 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 when on suhoor or futur and raise his hand and make dua and let all the house say ameen loudly, proudly. And next day my wife do it. The next day my daughter, the next day my son, everybody, and they will learn how to make dua. How many of us will make their children every time make a small khatira, tell us something, teach us a hadith or an ayah? They are shy in the beginning, yes. But encourage them, encourage them. I've learned an amazing lesson from the, the previous khutbah that make the prayer, make the, this gathering some, something that your kids, whether old or young, look up to. They're waiting to get how? Any good news you wanna give to your kids, give it after the salah jama'ah you do, or after the Quran halaqa you have. Let them always have this feel of cheerful, happiness, good news, a gift, a congrats, a, a, a good grade that you wanted, you know, praise them, always praise them in that moment. So they will attach this praising, this good news, this gift from my dad or mom happened while af just after we did jama'ah together, just after we read Quran together. Brothers, wallahi, 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 it's so easy and we have access to all types of terbiyah, of tactics, of tips, how to raise our family the best way possible. And we, I've seen amazing examples. MashaAllah, tabarakallah, there are. They're not a lot, but there are few, MashaAllah, which means it works. Yeah, but brother, I work two jobs. La ilaha illallah. Even if you work two jobs, can you, can you give, give your family uh, 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 30 minutes a day? One hour every other day? Half a day in a weekend? A concentrated half day with my family in a weekend? Yes, we can. But if I work one or two times, uh, 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 I have a job or two, and my wife have another job, and my kids are in the daycare, and they're in the school eight, nine hours a day, and after they come from school, they leave you know, for the gym, or they stay on their, on their social media, TikTok and, and Instagram. And then I come and complain to the masjid, Sheikh, uh, my daughter uh, is, is questioning a lot of aqidah things. I don't know how to answer her. Sheikh, uh, my daughter left her deen or hijab. Wallahi, we've seen that. One of the brothers I've met, he told me, his two daughters kept questioning a lot of things about Islam and they believe Islam is against women and against girls and biased to men and this and that, that he himself started to believe so. Someone who, who lived all his life in Middle East. And we, we met him with, by coincidence with the will of Allah Azza wa Jal in, 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 uh, in Ottawa, me and Dr. Amjad, we were there for uh, 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 some meetings. And alhamdulillah, we started talking with him about Islam. Him, he started because he's not equipped. He left, you know, the days pass by without strengthening his own Iman. And to be able to raise a healthy family, you yourself need to raise yourself first. You need to be strong. You need to come and attend halaqa. You don't be shy if your, your children ask you a question and you say, I don't know, but I'll get back to you. Search it, come talk to a sheikh. Ask Mr. Google. You will find the answer between your hands and Allah will open your heart. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu quwa anfusakum wa ahlikum naran wa quuduhan nasu wal hijara. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum faya fawza al-mustaghfirina fa astaghfirullah.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما One week before Ramadan I've witnessed at least five janaza and all these people, the Muslims who passed away, they were hoping to reach Ramadan. So you need to appreciate the fact that you still live and you were being given the gift that many other people were hoping to get. But Allah chose you to, 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 to bring you to Ramadan and to make you enjoy Ramadan. Don't let Ramadan leave without getting the best value out of Ramadan. Please do not. If you have a vacation, an annual vacation that you can take, take it now. If you can take these, whatever left two weeks or so, take it now. And use that vacation to purify your soul, to get closer to Allah, to protect yourself and your family from Jahannam. And to make use of this amazing bazaar, amazing discount. The hasanat is multiplied infinite and the sayyat are constrained to the minimum because the shayateen, all the evil powers are being chained in Jahannam for you. This is a season of ta'at. Don't waste it. And remember when we die, what do we say? Allah Azza wa Jal, Islam, Allah gave us Islam and Quran and it's the only religion that describes our feelings, describes our life before we even lived it and describe our death before you even die, and describe the akhirah, and give you a full picture of everything that you need to know. Imagine when in Surah Al-Mu'minun, Ayah 99, قال الله عز وجل بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم حتى إذا جاء أحدهم الموت حتى إذا جاء أحدهم الموت قال قال رب ارجعون لعلي أعمل صالحا فيما تركت لعلي أعمل صالحا فيما تركت This is a scary ayah When we die we, the first thing we will say Please Allah give me one last chance Why? Because I want to do better in whatever I left behind I want to do a little bit better. Give me one more last chance. And what better we want to ask Allah to give us a chance to raise our children, to ask forgiveness from those that we have oppressed, to do any good deed we can. So I can do better deeds from whatever I left behind. I left behind money, I want to pay zakah from that money. I left behind children, I want to teach them something before I die and ask them to pray for me. I, I, I did not make a continuous charity, sadaqa jariya, fi sabilillah. I want to do that. I want to uh, 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 give an orphan. I want to build a masjid or even a brick in a masjid. So at least this you will say after you die. But Quran and Allah told you now before you die, told you already what you're going to ask for. You are being given a test with the answers. Who does that? Who does that? Allah told you, you will, will be questioned about your Lord, your Nabi, your Deen, your Kitab. And Allah told you, and the answer, Allah is Rabbi, Muhammad is Nabi, Quran is Kitabi, Islam is Deeni. The answers are there. But you have to live them, learn them, love them. What more easy deen of that? If you go and check other deen, you need to go through too much to reach even that first level of those other man-made deen. So easy. So Allah is telling you, you are going to ask for a chance. You have all the chance now. Why would you wait? Okay, so let's be more specific. What's the other ayah tells us about what do we ask Allah to come back to life to do what? Look in Surah Al-Munafiqoon and imagine uh, the Surah is what? Al-Munafiqoon. So this Surah, 
they're to focus on those who talk, say things and they do other things. That's the minimum description of munafiqeen. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وأنفقوا مما رزقناكم من قبل أن يأتي أحدكم الموت وأنفقوا مما رزقناكم من قبل أن يأتي أحدكم الموت فيقول رب لولا أخرتني رب لولا أخرتني إلى أجل قريب فأصدق وأكم من الصالحين فأصدق وأكم من الصالحين. This ayah tells us spend from whatever Allah has provided you before death will come and then. You say, oh my Lord, please spare me some time. So I go and ajal in qareeb, little time. I'm just asking for very little time. Wallahi, even if this time is minutes or seconds, we will just take it. To do what? Fa'asaddaq, so I will pay charity fi sabilillah. And then be among the good ones, the righteous people of Salihin. Allah is telling you exactly what you will wish for. You will wish to come back because you know at subhanallah, the time of death, you see the unseen. The, your basar becomes hadid, so sharp, you start seeing the reality of life. You will see your movie from the time of birth to the time of death. You will see the angels, the way Allah created them. You will see and feel and know, am I saved or am وَالْعِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ cursed. Am I a man or a human going to Jannah to enjoy or I will go وَالْعِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ to hellfire. That single moment, everything is clear for you. People around you busy crying, busy, some of them could be busy calculating all oh, the wealth, the health, the car, I'm going to take the Mercedes, you take the deal. Everybody will be in exhaust and you are, you're looking at لَا حَوْلَ is, is this real? I'm leaving this life. I wasted my time investing in money and cash or in quarreling with my neighbors or my relative or, or by my parents or myself. Please give me, you're trying. Wallahi, this is true. This is Quran, ya jama'ah. This is not, this is Quran. You, while your soul is leaving your body, you would wish and cry for it to come back for a bit. I, I really, I have a hundred dollar in my pocket. I want to take it with me to Jannah. I just want to put it, fi sabirillah. You will think of everything you can to save yourself. So the message of today, your real investment is your deen and on top priority in this country, your family and your children. And take Ramadan as a station, as a, as a season of ta'at, train yourself, go back now and think, what should I do with whatever with the 14 days left of Ramadan? Invest in my children, in my family, in my time, before it's too late. And today there is an investment for you. Alhamdulillah, for your children and my children, we managed to make an extension on my left side. And it's alhamdulillah been three weeks, day in, day out, work 24 seven, to be have extra space. MashaAllah, we are, this is our fifth, Khutbah today, and the masjid is full. Our third and fourth khutbah, the masjid was full to the parking, and the brothers at the back are getting the carpets. Look at them. They're getting at the carpets. These carpets were in the parking lot. So that means this extension is essential, and your support is essential. If you don't support, the extension will not stop. Allah will bring people, will continue the work. But you need this support before you die. You need it because Allah will question us. The Khatib Yom Al Jum'a in the middle of Ramadan ask you to support the masjid to make it bigger because the community became bigger, the children need it, the family need it. You are investing in your family by donating whatever you can. Give me a few minutes after the salah. I'm going to call for donation and encourage everyone. Don't leave without 
paying something fi sabillah in this masjid. Allahumma aghfir lana warhamna. واهدنا واهد بنا وجعلنا هداة المهديين اللهم ارحمنا فوق الأرض وتحت الأرض ويوم العرض عليك اللهم اجعلنا ممن يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه اللهم اجعلنا من المتصدقين والمتصدقات المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات والطائعين والطائعات والصائمين والصائمات والقانتين والقانتات والمحبين لرسول الله والمحبات والمحافظين على ديننا والحافظات اللهم اجعلنا واجمعنا مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في الفردوس الأعلى من غير سابقة عذاب ولا حساب اللهم اجمعنا مع الصالحين والأنبياء والشهداء اللهم حرر المسجد الأقصى اللهم حرر المسجد الأقصى اللهم حرر المسجد الأقصى اللهم رده إلينا ردا جميلا اللهم أعن أهله المرابطين فيه يا رب العالمين واجعلنا خير عون لهم ولجميع المسلمين اللهم أعنهم يا رب العالمين ولا تعن عليهم اللهم أعنهم ولا تعن عليهم اللهم تقبل شهداءهم اللهم اشف جرحاهم اللهم فك أسراهم اللهم أطعم جائعهم اللهم اكس عريانهم اللهم استر عوراتهم اللهم استرنا معهم يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اغفر لنا تقصيرنا يا رب العالمين اللهم اجبر كسرنا اللهم اجبر كسرنا اللهم اجبر كسرنا اللهم احمي بيوتنا اللهم احمي أبناءنا اللهم احمنا من جهنم اللهم ابعدنا عن جهنم وعن نار جهنم وعن حر جهنم وعن زقوم جهنم وعن زمهرير جهنم اللهم اجعلنا صالحين مصلحين لا فاسدين ولا مفسدين اللهم اجعلنا يا رب العالمين من القائمين على دينك اللهم استخدمنا ولا تستبدلنا اللهم استخدمنا ولا تستبدلنا اللهم استخدمنا ولا تستبدلنا اللهم اجعل هذا البلد آمنا وسائر بلاد المسلمين اللهم اجعل هذا المسجد دائما بليء مليء برحمتك يا رب العالمين ورعايتك اللهم افتح قلوبنا للصد افتح قلوبنا للتبرعات اللهم أعنا على فعل الخير حيث كنا وحيث كان آمين 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 إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وأنت يا أخي أقم الصلاة